Sasha here. We're going to take a quick look at the point transform tool in Affinity Designer 2 for making pattern adjustments. We're going to be looking at two different scenarios, one where I'm just changing a piece of my pattern and another where I'll be using the tool to help true up my pattern pieces. Let's get started. In this first little section, I'm just going to be making changes to a side seam. There's been many cases where I really just want to swing the side seam outward without actually changing the shape of the line. So let's take a look at that. So today I am working with the green style Cambria top and I already know that I want to get rid of this outer fuller fit line and I want the more contoured line for my um, side seam. So I am going to use my node tool, which is uh, A as the shortcut key. I'm gonna break the curve, break the curve. Make sure that's selected and delete it. Now, um, I know that this doesn't have quite enough room for my hips, even if I move this whole thing up, um, it's a little bit close. So I do want it to kind of more match these, at least this outer point. Um, and we can easily do that with the point transform tool, which is F. So let me select the line and we need to select a pivot point, which will be this one here. Now in Adobe, there was a similar tool and you could kind of just select anywhere. If you can select anywhere in pivot, I have not figured out <laughs> how to do that. If there, maybe there's a modifier key, I kind of don't think so. Um, but anyway, it's not gonna do what you want it to do. It's not pivoting. Um, if you just select anywhere on the line. So as far as I can tell so far, you have to select another node in order to get it to pivot. Okay, so you've selected your pivot point, select another node that you want to move, and there we go. Now it's swinging, and I can put it right there where I want it, and I've got more room through the hips. You can also use the point transform tool to make sure that your seam, seam lines are trued up. In this case, I'm actually using a sloper that I've created that takes into account the asymmetry of my shoulders. Um, and the way it ended up is the front bodice has a very different looking shoulder slope than the back. I've made a couple of t-shirts. Um, I made some over the summer that worked out really well using this. Um, so I'm just gonna continue using it um, with this Cambria top to see how it comes out. Um, Cause I'm still kind of experimenting with this. <laughs> Don't ask me what I did to make it. I can't really remember right now cause it was so long ago. Um, but just to explain why my front and back shoulder slopes are so different here. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is copy and paste, always working with a copy as much as possible. My front, and I'm gonna drag it over and line it up with my back. I'm lining up these high shoulder points right here. That looks pretty good. Okay, now I can go to my point transform tool, which is F as a shortcut. Um, and I'm gonna select this high shoulder point on the front as my rotate uh, rotation point. Now be really careful when you're doing this. If you just go ahead and drag, notice that this is elastic, this is moving, this is changing my scale. And you can actually see in that little dark box up ahead or up like near my cursor how much the scale is changing. See, it's now it's 92%. And now we're back up to about 100%. Um, I don't want that to happen. That's dangerous when you're working with patterns and they need to stay the same. So let me undo that. And I'm going to press down, press and hold the command key 
right there. I guess I have to hover over my point first, the command key. And then as I'm rotating, it's only rotating around that point. It is not changing the scale. And you see that the scale doesn't even appear in that little black box. Um, I'm not entirely sure what that uh, modifier key is on Windows. It might be Alt, might be your Windows key. Play around with it. Um, you should be able to figure it out pretty fast. I tried looking for it before I made this and I just I couldn't find it. Um, but know that there is, if you're a Windows user, know that there should be a key, a modifier key that allows you to do that without accidentally rescaling your pattern. Okay, so um, by using this tool, I've found out that I'm not going to be trued up. I need to make some changes and instead of moving this out, because um, this, this pattern I'm going to make with a puffed sleeve, I am going to uh, kind of want my my sleeves in or my um, pattern inset a little bit I'm gonna go ahead and make changes to the front pattern piece only um, so I'm just using my node tool to move that in now they are the same and then I will just repeat the operation that I did before to move this back into place so I'm going to hover over my point. See, this is already selected as the rotation point. Hover over here, command key, and rotate it right back where it was. I'm just going to go down here and make sure it's all lined up. I can rotate from this point. And there we go. Um, and there might be some, like these are snap settings. I might have been able to um, choose one of those to snap to this object, um, but I am not. 100% confident on that, so I didn't do it that way. Um, but that's one of the beauties of programs like this, is the more you explore, the more you learn, and the more ways you find to use your tools, um, and just ways to um, do what you wanna do. <laughs>